Hello guys and welcome back to part 2 of the 1k sub special video overviewing the British challenge so far. So this episode began with the creation of a British pub and it's something I wanted to do for a little while now. There was a lot of props and assets that don't quite have everything you want on them so I wanted to create a nice pub with a nice garden. And I must say the detailing really did come a long way um, since the last episode. This is the pub garden I created here and very basic but it was a combination of a lot of different sort of ideas. We've got the flower beds, we've got the floor, got the grass risen up area as well. So it was a bit of an experiment but it really did work in the end and that was the basis of what I was going to do sort of further forward as well. We also done this little school here as well which is pretty cool. Episode 19 was the football field and this was bringing me back to my youth when I used to play Sunday League football. So the idea here was to create a nice sort of football field with a sort of little clubhouse and park around the side and a little car park. Pretty much what we're used to seeing in the UK from anyone playing sort of low, low league football I guess. Um, and it did work out really well. I did really like the actual um, football field asset itself. It worked in terms of long distance. It worked really well. And you could see it from a high view as well. So that was always good and always a good thing to have in terms of uh, selection of props. And we also done a school over in this corner along with a small five-a-side football pitch and some tennis courts and another little sort of school football stadium as well. So combination of them all, this little zone here with the church as well was completed and the detailing of again was very exciting to do and I really did enjoy it. Moving on to episode 20, now this was one of my absolute favourite episodes to be doing. Now construction sites at this point of the video were becoming very popular in builds from everyone on the sort of community and I wanted to do my own. I was gonna well, I was having an issue whether to use the buildings such as this one here or create something from scratch so I thought what better than combine the two together. So I sort of went for a design that looks like it was a early stage at this bottom corner with a sort of halfway through built um, building um, progression in the middle followed by a pretty much a dirt construction site at the far end as well. So the idea and the combination of colours and different textures worked amazingly and I found this wall as well which went around the whole board building site which is something you see very often um, for building sites in the UK also put a big floodlight around and yeah I'm, I was extremely happy of how this came across and a lot of you guys gave me some very very positive feedback and a lot of you actually went away after and designed your own so that was extremely exciting and very appealing for me to to hear that you used my inspiration to also carry on your own design using some of my techniques. Next we moved on to episode 21 which is pretty much just building the house and estate out. So I used the foundation and sort of layout of the buildings here from Milton Keynes itself and I did really like the idea of having these um, sort of boxed house areas with a middle section for a sort of park or some description. And it seems very common in Milton Keynes that that's how these were built. If I was to do it again, I probably would make sure that the houses I'm using here all lined up. There are a couple that don't, well, it's a mismatch basically of different types of houses, which doesn't look the best, but when you zoom out, it does look pretty nice actually having different types and colors um, rather than blocks. So I'm a bit skeptical about which one I'd have gone for, but they both work for me and I also done this little middle section of a sort of wildlife sort of area, a little pond um, which was pretty cool as well. But this was all about just expansion, I needed to build out the town, uh, sorry the city and sort of get things going, get the actual population built up so then everyone else was actually moving into other areas and the sort of industrial area was also actually fully working. We then moved on to episode 22 which was the shopping centre and this was an absolutely ingenious idea if I do say so myself. I actually combined a few of these, um, well the shopping centre together and way before the prop tool and move it mods 
you was unable to actually move these buildings by hand. So what I had to do, I actually had to um, use my initiative a little bit and actually build a road underneath the other building and plop that on top. And obviously in terms of measurement etc you had to be absolutely precise that when that lined up with the road the two buildings actually overlapped one another. So despite that being a very difficult thing to do then and very easy now that was a big accomplishment for me and I was extremely pleased how that came about. So I also done this little area here there's a little small town um, little shopping um, shopping town centre I guess memorial and a pub in the corner here another hotel just the normal things you tend to find in a town sorry in a city <laughs> city center also done a little bus area here as well i wanted to try and get some buses around this area i haven't actually till well up till today i haven't actually done uh bus stops but that's sort of in preparation for doing so in a later date so the next job was in episode 23 to pretty much just detail the shopping centre and that front of the shopping centre I absolutely adore. We created a little lake in the front with a bridge that went over which if you go back to episode 23 you'll see how long that bugger took. It took a long time to get to work but if you tried that now it would literally take seconds with all the mods that are available um, which was... A it's disappointing in terms of it could have made my life a lot easier but in a way I really enjoyed the sort of frustration and fun of actually getting things to work myself which aren't meant to work rather than mods that sort of create things and make them more realistically able to work so that was interesting we done a little market square here as well but all in all this area was meant to sort of combine the two so we got the city centre shopping hall and also sort of older sort of area of the market square etc episode 24 was next and we moved on to the creation of a football stadium and at this point it was the time when Leicester City had won the Premier League so in respect for them I designed the actual stadium and surroundings I know the stadium itself isn't exact but I built the actual foundation exactly as you see it in Google Maps so in preparation for their celebrations I decided to do that and it came out absolutely fantastic. I was really pleased with how it worked and um, we built a few other bits and bobs around as well. There was a power station and uh, a few other bits in the corner as well which you'll see once this swings round. But yep, yeah, overall this car park as well came out absolutely brilliantly. I know now with the new decor it would look a lot better but going back over work you've done is not the best <laughs> once you've done it you want to keep it like that and the nighttime scenes they look absolutely beautiful I love it so episode 25 was the castle and this is one of the well this is what you guys asked for and I produced the best as I could so the idea here was to create a castle on the top of a sort of mountainy type of island um, and yeah at first it was just going to be a castle as you see here with some walls around it etc but in the end as you'll see as we move on to the next episode I decided to make it a little bit more lifelike so what we've done is we actually created a sort of <laughs> medieval town I guess was the best way to describe it and uh, I was extremely pleased of how this came out and a lot of you guys really did love the design concept and yeah overall one of my favourite zones to do because it's so different not many people have done something like this and I was also able to build in a different era as well so we're talking about all these sort of farmlands all over the place and uh, the housing as well obviously these are the ones from the workshop which are actually medieval houses probably a little bit overkill and there are some vehicles driving around this area which <laughs> wouldn't really happen but it did really come alive and I sort of created as best as I could to make it look like it would be from that era um, but yeah like I say this was more of a little exciting project than um, something to be more realistic in the end I sort of <laughs> classed it as a medieval reenactment um, sort of town um, but yeah, it came out nicely and I'm pleased with how 
you all responded to it. We've done a nice little market area here as well, which has got a lot, a lot of detail. And uh, my frames per second completely drops when we go through this, as you can see from the uh, the view across. But yeah, exciting to build, and I'm glad you guys also enjoyed it. So this leads us on to the music festival, which out of every single video has got the biggest amount of clicks and I'm extremely happy with, with that in fact. Um, I mean it started out with just building this one stand. I wanted to sort of show everyone how easy it is to build your own assets within the game as much as it is if you've done it in the actual creator um, part of the, the game feature. But I personally prefer to do it in game and I wanted to show that across here. So we done a small stage here as you can see, had to improvise a few times. Um, but this did get a lot of talk on uh, Reddit and other videos, and uh, a lot of comments in the description below, um, in, well, in the description of the video. And I wanted to create something with light as well. So as you can see here, I spent a lot of time creating this stage. We've got all different sorts of things put together. And we got the main stages done in the end. We've done three. Um, and this is when all the good mods came into play. So Move It came into play, which really did help a lot when building this, as you was able to see. If you watch the videos back, you can see how easy it makes life when you're able to copy and paste parts and, and make more well, move them around because that's the only way I was able to create these lights and add things onto already um, assets. So this was more of an exciting episode because not just because of the feedback and the number of clicks that you all gave it but because I was able to try something completely different and I could also spend a lot of time working and well working out the new mod tools which was really exciting episode 29 was the completion of the music festival and this this looks amazing it's not often that I can sit back with my work and really, really say how pleased I am, but this in particular really did. It, it ticks all the boxes. You've got the lovely little cabin site in the corner. The floors just look absolutely amazing, and all the people as well scattered around. It took many, many hours, but what this ended up being is pure beauty. I think out of all of my builds so far, this one looks the most alive and realistic. I know these people are props and they aren't moving around, but just looking at it gives you that feeling of a, you know, just screw, zooming through a stage like Glastonbury or something like that, with the little tents in the corners as well, with the bars, etc. We've got a little food and eating area, all the portaloos got this ferris wheel as well it's got everything that you would imagine to see at a festival you've got the big tvs as well in the background so in terms of realism i think it ticks all the boxes if i was going to do something different maybe i could have made the people a little bit more uh, less boxy in the main areas as you can see where they're all grouped together it was because i copied and pasted them to be honest um, but when you look at views like this the nighttime scene looks incredible. I added some extra lights around and behind the stage and also all over the place. So you can see how alive it becomes when you add these light details. And I really do love the camping zone. I even put some lights inside some of the tents and the the light that it gives off gives that feeling that people are in there with their sort of torches or lights on. And again, realism is really, really what I love about this game. And it, this was my favourite. By all means, this was my favourite episode. So this leads us on to the last of the British challenges so far, and that is the British Pier. So things did get a little bit delayed after all these issues with the update of the new City Skylines build and I did start working on the Christmas video. So this episode was the start of the seaside town. So this was the British Pier, and I've still got all intentions to 
finish off the British challenge. It's obviously going to be a background job as I want to introduce some new games into the new year. But I'll be hopefully working on this once a week at least to bring out one video. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where we got to with the British challenge and that's what has generated these thousand subs and I'm extremely happy guys thank you very much for everything you've gave me and supported me I'm absolutely thrilled that we've already hit the 1k marker and anything you guys want to see anything that you want me to do in terms of videos etc I'm all ears I'm always happy to try new things out and anything you want personally let me know other than that guys it's Christmas Eve I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Keep an eye out for my videos over the festive period and I'll also be streaming a bit as well. So guys, hope you get all that you want. Don't be a bar humbug and I'll catch you in my next video. All the best.